In this presentation, we will examine the Meeting Workspace templates available in WSS version 3.0. Meeting Workspaces are a special kind of subsite that you can create in both MOS 2007 and WSS Team Collaboration sites for the purpose of gathering multiple people together and discussing or organizing a meeting. In fact, meeting workspaces can even be held on a repetitive basis for routine meetings, such as sales or project planning. We'll take a look at the five meeting workspace templates available and how you can create your own. We'll also take a look at customizing a basic meeting workspace by adding several subpages and perhaps even some custom web parts. Let's get started. Here we are at a team collaboration site for Triple H Farms. Now there's three ways that you can create a meeting workspace. The first way is to create an event on a calendar in the parent site and then build a meeting workspace around it during the event creation. A second method is to launch Outlook. Have Outlook linked to a calendar on a team collaboration site and within Outlook schedule a new appointment or event and then build a meeting workspace from Outlook. The third and final way is to generate a new subsite underneath a collaboration site and use a meeting workspace template. For our purposes, we have a Triple H Farms barn meeting every Friday morning. Here at the parent Triple H Farms collaboration site, I'm going to visit the calendar and schedule a reoccurring meeting for every Friday. Having created the new event as the barn meeting in the barn office from 8 to 9 a.m. every Friday throughout the end of the year, underneath the recurrence we have a workspace section that allows us to create a meeting workspace to organize agendas, documents, and minutes from this meeting. I'm going to go ahead and check the use a meeting workspace around this event as I create it in the calendar at Triple H Farms collaboration site. Notice that SharePoint Services immediately delivers me to a new meeting workspace page. Clicking OK to this. Next we have to select our workspace template. There are five and they're pretty self-explanatory. We'll take a look at each one in a moment, but for this purpose we're going to go with a basic meeting workspace. Now there's a couple of things to point out that make a workspace look very different from a collaboration site. First of all, we do not see the global navigation tabs available on Triple H Farms. Also, there's no quick launch bar down the left. As we look at the middle section of the page, we find that the page is laid out to include tabs, and these tabs can be used to organize subpages underneath the barn meeting workspace. Notice also the Go to Calendar link. If you click the Go to Calendar link, you are taken back to the calendar at Triple H Farms on which the event was originally created that generated this meeting workspace. Back at the Barn Meeting Workspace, I'm now going to add a couple of subpages underneath. To create a subpage, under Site Actions, Add Pages is a completely separate menu item. Once the Barn Meeting Workspace homepage goes into Edit Mode, here I'm going to add a separate page. I'm going to go ahead and set this for all meetings. And we're taken directly to the new Discuss page and I've allowed to add web parts. And now that the page looks the way I like, I'll exit the editing mode. Here's our new Discuss page with a discussion board returning to the home page. If I wish to add an additional web part to the home page, this is a page like any other and you simply edit the page to send it into edit mode and then click on the zone in which you wish to add an additional web part. I'm going to add a web part to the right zone. Now that I have finished, I'll exit the editing mode and we see the user tasks appear in the right zone. Now, 
Right now, this meeting workspace does not have a task list, so I'll go under Site Actions, Create a New List or Library, and I'll add a tasks list to this barn meeting workspace. Returning to the home page, I don't wish to display the entire task list. The point of using the user task on the right was so that the only task that would be displayed would be those for the user who is currently signed in to this meeting workspace page. So I'm going to go ahead and close this web part so that the task list is not displayed on the home page. The list does still exist, it's just not being displayed. However, it is important that the task list be displayed on some page so that someone can manage it. So I'm going to add a third tab. Here on the Tasks tab, I will now set permissions for the tasks list. I'm going to make Wendy Henry the taskmaster. And I'm going to remove the member's ability to contribute by changing them to only read. Back at the Barn Meeting Workspace, as administrator, I'm going to change the task list and add a task assigned to Edna End User. And one more for Sally Secretary. Now we'll see the effects of those changes as we log in as different folks. First I'm going to sign in as Wendy. Notice that since Wendy Henry is not an owner with full control, the Site Actions menu disappears. She does still have the ability to view the discussion board and contribute, and as she looks at the task list, she can read the entire list. However, none of those tasks were associated with her, so the user tasks web part on the home page doesn't show any duties for Wendy. Now we'll log in as Edna. And notice that the user task web part on the home page comes to life for Edna. It's telling her that there's a task associated with her to bring cookies. And if she looks at the task list, she can still read the entire list and see all of the tasks involved. Notice, however, the add an item is gone. She ha does not have the ability to post a new task to this list. Notice also if we change the date to 914, which is the meeting coming up in mid-September, the task also applies to Edna on that date as well. It is always Edna's job to bring cookies. Now we'll log in as Sally Secretary. Notice the user task list changed to bring a notebook. That was the task assigned to Sally Secretary. Now Sally's going to head into the document library. However, notice that because Sally does not have contribute, she cannot add to the document library. I'll log back in as someone who has at least contribute permissions, and that would be Wendy Henry. Now signed in as Wendy, the new and upload buttons appear, and Wendy will add content to the library. Now we'll sign back in as one of the readers. and Edna sees the new document. Edna can send the document back to the parent collaboration site using the send to link for another location. As long as she knows the URL as the destination, she'll send it back to Triple H Farms Document Library. 
now that Edna is done copying it up to the parent library, if we were to visit the parent library, there should be a team building document in it. Here we are at the parent Triple H Farms, heading into their shared documents, and sure enough, Team Building 101 was published up to it by Edna just a moment ago from the meeting workspace. Returning to the Triple H Farms Collaboration Site's homepage as administrator, now we'll take a quick look at the different meeting workspace templates and how they lay out. Here we have a reoccurring social meeting workspace template. You can see that it already contains a discussion tab bearing a discussion board and a photos tab bearing a picture library. Much like our basic meeting workspace template we worked with a moment ago, the reoccurring nature of the calendar event has put a reoccurring link list here on the left. Whereas here we have a meeting workspace constructed from the decision meeting workspace template. There's only a single page and there are six lists created by default. Thirdly, here we see a meeting workspace constructed from the multi-page meeting workspace template. There are three pages, however pages 1 and 2 are blank awaiting web parts. You can also see that the multi-page meeting workspace template constructs only three lists. Last but not least, we have the blank meeting workspace template which delivers only a single page and no lists or web parts. In this presentation, we explored the Windows SharePoint service concept of meeting workspaces. We created a basic meeting workspace around a calendar event on the parent collaboration site and then witnessed how it behaved for different users based on their permission set. We also took a very quick look at publishing a document from a document library on a meeting workspace up to the parent collaboration site. Lastly, we introduced each of the five meeting workspace templates. For more advanced information about working with meeting workspaces, please return to SharePointScreencast.com for more SharePoint videos.